Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us on The Advocate. It has been an interesting week, really, from the sacking of the service chiefs to the rancor in oil state over the Fulani herdsmen. I am concerned about these drums of war across the country. That will be the core of my advocacy today. Jomoke is focusing on our health care in Nigeria, and Treasure is looking at lessons from the US inauguration. Peace is like fragrance, which you can't spray on others without having a portion on you. Welcome to The Advocate. Five panelists, five thought-provoking topics discussed in a no-holds-barred manner. In other words, we call a spade by its name. Today, I'm firing the first salvo by reminding us that war never brings peace. In other words, I'm saying it will be fallacious to label an entire community or ethnic group criminals because of crimes committed by few. Let us fish out the criminals and deal with them. Treasure, on the other hand, is directing our government to America. Maybe they will be able to learn a thing or two from Biden's inauguration. Jumoke, who I'm seeing for the first time this year, Jumoke, Happy New Year, <laughs> is challenging us, or if you like, waking us up to the realities of lack of affordable health care system in Nigeria. Liberus, unfortunately, is not taking a swipe at any governor or federal government today, but simply asking us to be more religious tolerant. Last but not the least, our man of many caps, Bolaun, is not only gazing his ball on child marriage in the North, but the frightening number of other school children in the country. So you can see it's a cocktail of topical issues spiced with seriousness and laughter. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back after the break. We're going to have to let truth scream louder to our soul than the lies that have infected us. Our nation on the precipice. Nigeria today has serious security challenges, no doubt. There is no part of the country that is completely immune from criminal activities, from banditry in the Northwest to Boko Haram in the Northeast, from armed robbery and kidnapping in the South to herdsmen, farmer clashes in the Middle Belt and Southwest. We all know, or at least have an idea of the reason why things are so bad. Poor leadership, failed criminal justice system, poverty, despair, unemployment, and so on. Nigeria has been described as suffering from multidimensional poverty, the effect of which manifests itself in the rising rates of criminals. Criminal activities are stated above. The recent uproar in the Southwest as a result of individuals backed by some powerful people evicting Fulani headsmen from their regions signals, in my opinion, a failing state. Make no mistake, I'm not supporting the activities of criminal elements within the headsmen, but categorizing the entire community as criminals is what worries me. It may interest you to know that some of them are also victims of cattle rustling, which has not attracted any attention at all. The deafening silence of government in condemning the activities of the criminal element within the herdsman community has not helped either. Though government had made attempts through introduction of Ruga and ranching 
But that seems to be failing. Lack of trust in government regarding their true intentions may have been responsible for this inbred law. Government must now be creative in addressing this problem. Can they address the desertification issue in the north to forestall migration to the south? Why must you take laws into your hands? Rather, we should task our government to profile a long-lasting solution to this age-long crisis. Nigeria should stand together to condemn criminal activities entirely and not resort to ethnic or religious colorization of the crimes. These, there are criminal elements among all the tribes. Why must we describe criminality by tribe or religion? What do you think will happen when you evict them from the Southwest? Have you forgotten that there are large communities of Southwesterners in the North? Have we forgotten so soon what led to the Civil War? Why we should tread carefully as the outcome of the resulting catastrophe would only benefit a few who have pilfered the wealth of this country. My advocacy today is not to advise against taking laws into our hands, rather prefer solution to this age-long problem. Our strength lies in our diversity, and daring also lies a threat to our survival as a people. Let us tread carefully. Very interesting. Uh, if Nigeria had the solution, I'm sure that we would have preferred it since because our current president is a headsman himself, isn't he? At least he has a head of cattle of 150 that I refuse to multiply. But I believe he knows about ranching. And um, lots of people who have discussed the quagmire in which we find ourselves as a country say that you cannot continue to do things the way you've always done it. When, one, the cattle that we have now has multiplied in numbers. So if we had six million in 1976, you know, when open grazing was allowed, maybe we have upwards of 30 million now. And the land that they had to graze on has also reduced in terms of population multiplication, there's um, desertification in the north and all of that. So you must find a new, a new solution to the new problem that you find yourself in, you know. But <sighs> saying not to call criminals by their tribe, is that not how I would describe somebody if he has a mark <laughs> that he says he's from somewhere? <laughs> I, I, I think, I very think we, may, we may be mixing it up in a way. Yeah, I mean, that, that last part about um, not calling... Criminals by their tribes. By not, yeah, not tribalizing criminality. A crime is a crime, and it doesn't matter who commits it. Whoever commits a crime should be fished out and punished according to the law of the land. But when he start taking... For example, a woman was kidnapped. I think it was, was in a duo or Delta. And they kidnapped her from the church. After kidnapping her from the church, they took her to the bush and sold her to the, to the headsman in the, in the bush. So when we're talking that particular criminality now, so we first of all talk about the Edo criminals who kidnap her from church and then take her to the yes. Fulani criminal. Who's, a criminal is a criminal. And whoever is involved in that entire chain should be dealt with according to the laws of the land. Uh, uh, but now, you, you see where the problem is, uh, really. I quite agree with you. Uh, let's not ethnicize criminality. But where the big problem is, um, I spoke with um, a, Fulani, a retired officer of a Fulani extraction, and he said if he were the president, the first thing he would do, the moment this issue started, he would say, you know what? This is not who, who we, we are, are as, as a, a people. people. I agree. We are better than this. The elders in our community, the stakeholders, let us fish out the bad ones amongst us before they begin to give our tribe a bad name. I agree. Take, for example, Nigerians. Because of the crime of a few Nigerians, once you step out with your green passport, you become that, you know, you are, you are profiled. Proving, you are proving guilty. It yeah. is for you to prove your innocence. Yeah. And it is normal everywhere. So what we should be doing now is this kind of advocacy. Let us collaborate. Let the stakeholders in our midst fish out the bad ones amongst us. Crime is not um, peculiar to a, a, a tribe or a ethnic group. In fact, like you said, it, they don't sell. 
There's a collaboration. It's a collaboration. <laughs> the locals we kidnap and hand over to those in the bush. Wow. Yes, that's. And so when you're talking to those in the bush, it is oh, the full animal that you hear. But those that kidnapped were the locals. For me, um, you have all talked about not ethnicizing, uh, you know, crime. Crime. So I'm going to move on to where you talked about um, tackling desertification in the north. I mean, Dubai has made it so easy to see that anything is infinitely possible if you, if you apply your mind to it and you desire change. Nigeria is not the, in the top 10 providers of cattle or rarers of cattle in Africa, nor in the world. We, are, we do not have that number to create this sort of crisis that we have. Th times have changed. And as we know, the only thing constant is change. Absolutely. So why allow these people to be nomadic? I know it's a lifestyle, but hey, this is the 21st century. It's no longer why not safe create for them. ranches could be created in the north and grow grasses for, for, for the cattle and let them you know, do it properly with technology? In decently, <laughs> it could be done. It's, it's, Anyone it's, can it's, change. It's possible to do it. Anyone can, can change. Who, who will do it? There, there are economics to these issues also, which is why the solution will always involve government. Government must be sure. committed seriously for it to take off. When you do a ranch, it's a capital outlay, and it could be huge. Hey. Let me also, let, let, let me land. Now, Ondo is saying, come and register if you are a header. Or your state is also planning to register headers. In the 50s, but they're not paying taxes. Headers were registered in the north. Mm -hmm. So we are going back to what we used to do in the past. 50, 60 years ago. When you register them, what happens? The cost of doing business also goes up. Because you, you are now taxable. It's the yes. law so recognizes you. The tax man there. will come after I you. I agree with you, but we yeah. can't also just leave all of these things. Because you also talked about, um, um, uh, uh, what's it called now? You talk about um, grazing. You talked about um, uh, cattle rustling. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Jumoke said you endanger them. Yes, you do. And by buying guns for them, you don't know the mind of the people you are empowering because you give them guns to protect themselves. And a man with a gun can go into another person's ground and you know use that gun for another means. So that's why we need to rethink our strategy. Totally. Which means totally. farmers also need guns. <laughs> then there'll be guns <laughs> everywhere. We, I, 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 to protect themselves why. from I, I just, invaders. Before, before we know? close, I quickly wanted to add that we're talking about the cattle, uh, the herdsmen now. But I'm also focusing on not just the cattle issue, crime. Generally. Yes, correct. Generally. You know, why must we describe, for instance, it started with Islamic terrorist, Edo, prostitute, and now we're talking Fulani herdsmen in danger. So we need to be careful. Now, after all is said and done, we will have to deal with the criminal elements in the society. Rather than label every Fulani person in the West a killer, the Fulani elders and stakeholders will have to assist in fishing the criminals, giving the tribe a bad name too. After the break, Treasure is asking us to look out for talent rather than this idea of government throwing crumbs at isolated problems. <laughs>